week three, I think, of the peak. Um, I just finished two weeks of uh, eccentrics, so my joints feel terrible. But strength actually is trending upwards quite quickly, like it normally does. So today's plan is paused doubles. Um, I think at 217.5, which is basically 220. And then, oh, did you hear that crack? That's my ribs. And then after that, got paused deadlifts. And then after that, I'm gonna drive to the gym and do some paused Hatfield squats and then some uh, stiff leg deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts, I think, a bunch of machines and some sled. Um, so it's a split session today because I'm getting heavier now with the accessories. I just am more, the equipment here is better for the heavy stuff and even just the environment. I prefer lifting in here compared to lifting at the commercial gym for heavy stuff. So what I'm doing now with, I think with all my sessions, more or less, is here first. So I've got my day one, which was yesterday. Um, I got pause bench first, long pause bench. Then after that, basically a bunch of upper body bodybuilding. Um, so yesterday I did that at the bodybuilding gym, but there's a few like issues with it, if you like. One is that when I go there, I've been going first thing on the morning. It's not ideal to make sure I've eaten plenty, properly warmed up, right headspace for it and everything else. Um, and I'm in a fortunate position of obviously having this set up. So what I'm doing now is, so from today, for all of my heavy sessions, I'll start here. So day one, pause bench. I'll pause bench here, and then I'll drive to the gym to do dumbbell work and whatnot there. And then today's session obviously will stay like it is. Um, like you're going to see today also means I can film more of the main stuff because what I found is sometimes when I go to the other place it's just packed uh, which is fine but can't really film stuff and just get on with training because if I just leave my tripod in the middle of the gym it's getting in people's way and stuff um, so this way, it means I can film these sessions, do whatever I need to, and then when I'm done with this, what I might do is, because you know I ramble, like I always do, once I'm doing my rambling, I can just overlay some of the clips of the other sets, if I do them, um, so that then I've got a log that way instead. So then day two is obviously today, and day three, I already do in here anyway, so that won't change, that's fine. Um, the exception to that, the, the change with that though, is that I've changed my diary around just for the next month or so whilst I'm peaking so that I can train at the same time roughly, so mid-afternoon on all the sessions. So it'll mean I'll work earlier and later, but I can keep it as consistent as possible, make sure I've eaten plenty, drank plenty, make it similar to when I would actually lift in competition, so there's no reason to cause any issues. So I just finished my last meeting, had some food, done 10, 15 minutes of like basically warming up stuff in the living room, come in here, started, uh, started squatting now. Um, so day three, I already said about that one. Day four, I'll keep doing that a whole strongest. So that's like the SBD session. Um, I was saying that the last time I did that session, so this weekend just gone, it's packed in there, um, and someone had brought their kids, 
I didn't really want to set up a camera whilst the kids were in there. Um, so I've got a couple of videos. I don't know if I'll have uploaded them or not. Um, so I hit, oh, that was a good crack. Um, 235 squat for one single and two singles at 225. I did the 225 singles first and then 140 bench for three singles. And then for deadlift, I did 225 for two singles and 230 for one single. So compared to the same week last peak, significantly higher. I've actually got it written down so I can compare. So I just was like, I think I said about this before, I'm kind of just like, if I can match what I did last peak, that should set me up to be in a good place. Um, and basically on the day, I just need to make more attempts. So if I can be a little bit ahead, even better. So compared to last time, So, let's have a look. So, same session as Sunday last time, I did one, I did three sets of one at two or five on squats. So the squats are 20 kilos heavier on the, on the multiple sets and 30 kilos heavier on one, so that's obviously good. Bench, I did 127, so I'm 12 and a half ahead of that, so that's cool. And deadlift, I did, 217 last time so i'm 12 and so i'm seven and a half ahead on the sets and i'm 12 and a half ahead on a single so that's pretty cool um so that's not a problem <laughs> not a problem that's a good sign it's progress um i'm not trying to make big dramatic dr jumps week on week just trying to make like nice and steady increases as i go and biggest change this time compared to last time is I'm only training four days instead of five. All right, it is still a warm, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Don't matter what warming up and stuff I do. Nothing warms you up more than just doing the activity. Uh, so that was 140, I'll go 180 next. So when I've been training at holes, I've been making jumps with the comp plates. So 50 kilo jumps instead of 40 kilo jumps. But for practicality in here, I'll make the 40 kilo jumps. So I'll go 180 next. And then, to be honest, it depends on how 180 is whether I'll go straight to 220. At uh, 217 is the set. I think you're probably starting to see what I'm thinking for today's doubles. And I think my doubles are four sets today rather than just three sets. So we shall see. Um, anyway, so I roughly have planned the next few weeks and it culminates in a 705 total i i'm torn um 700 is obviously being the goal if there's more than 700 on the day then obviously i'm going to do more than 700 um if i can get to 700 with my second attempt deadlift that'd be cool um but obviously i i can't actually decide what i'll do on the day until i'm there on the day and see how everything is moving. But the rough plan, so squats this week, I'm thinking 245, the week after 255, then 257, then 267, and then 275 at the competition. So that would be a 2.5 kilo PB. So we're already up there. Then bench this week, 145 
week after 150, 155, 160, and then 162.5. So last one, I benched 160 and it was really easy, but I went to 167.5 and I, I felt my pec pull. I don't know that it tore, but I felt a pull in my pec, so I just said no. So in theory, I should be strong enough to get uh, 162.5. Um, so that might be a second attempt to it, but obviously I need my pecs to hold up. And then, so that would be another 2.5 kilos on the total. So that takes me to 685, uh, because I totaled 680 last time. And then deadlift. So the plan this week, 237.5, then 240. 252.5, which will actually be a PB conventional. Then 260, the week before competition, which would be a massive PB. Um, so this might be a bit ambitious. And then I based this on what I did last time. So last time I did 240 in the gym. Then in competition, pulled 247.5. So it's 7.5 more. So this time, if I pull 260 in the gym, everything else goes the same. That would mean I pulled 267.5, which would be a 20 kilo increase. So that would be 705 total. Obviously, that'd be ridiculous, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. If I come to it, my second attempt would maybe be like 262.5. So that would get me to the 700 total with the squat and bench that I just said. And then my third attempt is basically a freebie to do whatever I want. Um, I don't really know what the next, the next total milestone, I don't really know that there is. 800 is obviously the, would be the next one. I mean, I haven't done 700 yet. Um, so then it would be like individual lift milestones. So the individual lift milestones, squat 275 is the next one, because that's five reds in competition. So the plan will be to try and hit that. Bench. The next powerlifting milestone will be 175, but I, I, to be honest, I don't think I'm anywhere near there. And I'm not being negative about that. I'm just being pragmatic. Um, and I don't know. I think I said this before. I don't know if I care enough about bench to try and push that that hard. Um, but we'll see. And then deadlift. So I've always had the goal of deadlifting 300. Well, always, since I've been getting more into the strength stuff. Um, so what I might do is switch the focus off the powerlifting stuff to, oh, that was weird, um, to prioritize the deadlift a bit more. Because at the minute, I think conventional is just weaker just because it just hasn't been trained. It's not necessarily that it is actually weaker as such. Right. I normally put velocity on for this, don't I? So, obviously on the day, I'll make a decision based on how everything's moving and whatnot. I forgot to turn the velocity stuff off last session. New session. Dead, deadlift. It's not deadlift, is it? Let me turn the velocity on. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I make the decisions on the day. Um, I'll set my openers. Realistically speaking, the only opener that will be significantly different will probably be the deadlift one. So last time, I think I opened on a 250 squat. I went 250, 265, 272.5. So depending on how training's going, obviously, what would be sensible would be a 252.5 opener and 267.5 and 275. That would be fine. And then for bench, I went 150, 160, fail. Um, so if I was to go 152.5, 162.5, then I've got space to go up if I need to. Uh, what am I looking for? Squat, pause, there we go. And then deadlift, I went 220, 247.5. Um, so that one might be a bit heavier, but we shall see. 
Right. Warm up. Final one. Well, if this moves well, it'll be the final warm up. If it doesn't, then I shall do another. Silly to be honest, really easy. Um, not complaining at all. I think I will go straight to 220. Um, I should check what the rep workout actually is supposed to be, shouldn't I? So, today's program is four sets of two. That'll be good. Yeah, I'm gonna go 220 for this. I'll start with 220, I can always go down the, don't tell Aaron, the program says um, 217.5, but this looks better, doesn't it? Um, and last week I did 215 for, is it seven count eccentric or five count eccentric? I can't remember. There'll be a video on my YouTube that you can look at anyway. So I think I can hear myself speaking. I'm like, is this logically the best idea? But actually, based on the speed of that, it reckons my pause max is about 250. So actually, this isn't unreasonable. So, two, two, zero. I mean, it's going to be hard, but that's fine. Like it's training, isn't it? Should we listen to something better as well? Um, any suggestions? Five finger death punch. That'll do. I wonder what the neighbors think. Right, time to lift. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think the pauses could have been better. Um, it felt pretty easy. Which makes me think the pauses were not good enough. But that is set number one done. Um, RPE. Seven. Set a rest time. Set a rest timer to start. So we've got three and a half minutes rest. Oh, I seriously thought that was going to be worse. Three more sets of two to go. Right. 
I'm just going to watch this back. Double check the pauses. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Well, <laughs> I just watched it. They're actually pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, so, some good news, bad news, news. Um, I've been resetting up 14 strong so that it means that you don't have to wait for me to go through it. And that is now live. So, 14strong.com. If you want to go through that, you can go through it at your own pace. There, is te there are two technique reviews in it. Now, what I'm going to do for the technique reviews is you have to have completed the day's tasks leading up to it, and then you can submit your technique for review. And then what I will do is on the days that I'm not trading, I will go through the technique reviews and upload them onto a YouTube video so you get a technique review done. Um, so this way, more people can get help. Obviously, if it gets to un unrealistic numbers of people going through it, I have to come up with a different system. But for now, that's the system I'm going to use. Um, website, I just uh, moved over the um, where it's hosted. So that took a bit of faffing to set that up, but that's sorted now as well. Things are positive. I just this morning, I say it accidentally, like I just uploaded, I think about 30 squat demos. I didn't actually mean to set them as public, but it's no, no issue. I just spammed um, my seven subscribers with short videos of me doing different kinds of squats. Um, I've got all this, I've got the squats done. The bench is done, but I need to upload them. Um, tomorrow, my plan is to go and film the deadlifts and to also film as many accessories as I can. Because some accessories and stuff that are a bit unusual, how I would have people do them, but I want them to have a demo of how exactly I mean for them to do them so they get the right intention. And once that's done, then it'll be starting to upload programs. I'm not just gonna upload it with like 50 programs. And I think they're just garbage. There'll be a handful of programs that are appropriate for different stages and there'll just be different variations on them. So that's stuff that I know is good quality. Um, so then if someone needs help getting started, can't afford full on coaching or whatnot, um, then they can do it that way instead. Right. Rest time is nearly up. By the time I get ready, it will be time to go put some music back on and go for another double. This one, I'm gonna go with a, I think it's, I'm just gonna, see now you, you've got me paranoid. How long is the, yeah, it's just two. I keep forgetting that the floor is uneven on the first rep and so I end up doing a weird half movement um, I start coming down and then shift forwards um, until the second rep um, I might, might put a sign up there and remember the floor is uneven <sighs> um, despite it not being as smooth as the first rep on the last set I'm still only going to give that a seven. I'm real tempted. 
I'm real, real tempted to go heavier. But I'm already going heavier than is planned. 220 for two paused is a PB. What I might do is next week might go 227.5. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll st I don't know if I start. No, I didn't start a timer. <sighs> My fitness. So, I've stopped doing any cardio now, apart from pushing a sled and swimming. Uh, it's pulling a sled, actually. I don't do any pushing, it's just pulling. Um, and swimming lessons. I wouldn't say they're like proper cardio, it's more like drills and stuff, technique. Um, I'm just walking, is my main cardio because now I don't want the extra fatigue. I'm literally just peaking for all the power lifting now. So even like my favorite, curls. I'm basically only doing like two, three sets of curls a week now. It's very disappointing, that's the way it is. My weight is sat now about between 94 and 95 kilos, which is pretty cool. I think on the day, I don't know what I'm gonna do for weighing in. Um, I won't do a walk up, there's no point, there's no weight class, 700 is the goal. But because I'm just not doing much volume, I don't need as many calories, so I'm just at maintenance. Well, I'm, I say I'm at maintenance, but I am losing weight, so I must not be at maintenance. But I think it's because my weight was artificially high from basically force feeding myself. Um, so I'll need to do some. I don't need to do anything, just carry on, basically. Um, but anyway, so cardio's gone now. So exercise-wise, I'm lifting four days a week. My steps, I'm not tracking. Um, if the weather's bad, I'll walk on the treadmill for an hour whilst I'm working generally. I say an hour, some days it's 40 minutes, some days it's two hours. An hour's a rough amount. When the weather's nicer, go out for a walk, and then just general locomotion. Obviously, when I go to the gym, do other stuff, there's more steps. Food-wise, I'm about 4,000 calories. Um, trying to have more diversity in protein and um, just different sources, but less diversity in the other stuff around it. So I find that tends to make my stomach feel better. So I have not had any lactose-containing things. I also have stopped having lactose-free alternatives because I do find that they irritate my stomach, not as much, but they can irritate my stomach as well. So I just don't bother having them anymore. Vegetables, I've reduced the total variety of vegetables down to just a few that I know don't tend to bother my stomach. Um, similarly with fruit. So, so from the outside looking in, it might look restrictive. There's still lots of foods, but basically anything that irritates my stomach right now, I'm just not doing. It's just not worth it. Um, I'm noticing that my belt, so there's two slots that my belt would normally fit, fit me. I've got it on the looser one and I'm finding that it actually feels all right for bracing. The tighter one I can wear, but it's difficult to breathe, especially on multiple reps. So I'm sticking with the looser one. Oh, I put up an Instagram Q&A thing earlier. I'll do this next set and then answer that. A reminder to myself that the floor is crooked. Next step. So I have to treat the first rip series. It still feels ridiculously heavy and racking it to be fair. Cracking. Excuse me. That's what I was waiting for. Come on. Uh. <laughs> 
Yeah. So the, the squats were fine. It's like immediate amnesia. The second the reps are done, I forget what happened during the set. <sighs> Screen on this is all cracked. I still call that a seven. Yeah, as soon as the set's done, I forget. But I was aware of, during the second rep, I was just thinking about the next exercise, which obviously you shouldn't do, which is a good sign, because it means this obviously isn't super hard, but it's a bad sign, because I should be focused on this. It's quite a lot of weight. Um, so, the Instagram Q&A. Busy one today. There's two questions. So the first one is why won't it let me go into your profile? Um nope, nope. So the first question is from Luke. There we go, we'll get there eventually. Um and the actual question was tips of how to grow a glorious beard. Come on, you just don't shave. I don't actually have any advice on that. My beard care is, I wash it whenever I wash my hair. I wash my face. I comb it if I remember. If we're going out, that's it. That's the beard care tips. I trim my moustache whenever Rich says that there's too much moustache um, if we kiss. That's basically it. Or if it starts getting into my food. Um, and then I leave it, basically from the end of summer, I just leave it uh, through winter to get really long, so I look like Santa, also because it is warmer, but like this time of year, keep all this stuff neater, leave it, I don't know if it's a serious question, that's it, that's the advice, time, be older, I'm 31 in a couple of days, that obviously makes a difference, I don't think I could grow a proper beard until I was in my mid-twenties. Um, and I basically very rarely have shaved since. Next thing from Will. Why didn't you do the Zercher from the floor? I assume he means for the exercise demo. Truthfully, when I was doing the exercise demo, I was knackered. Because what I was doing was, I was stood with the bar on my back with 60 kilos. Jack was filming and he would be like, three count eccentric, squat, go. Press the button, do the squat, pause. Five count eccentric, go. Press the button, do the rep, pause. So I'd done like <laughs> tons and tons and tons of reps in a row. I was knackered. And I wasn't really thinking about the Zercher squat. And to be honest, because I've not done it in my training for so long, I was going to do it from the floor. So what I was initially going to do um, was show it all the way from the floor. But when I did it, just moving the bar, and I had 60 on, I burst the blood vessels across my elbow. But we didn't get a video for that. I was like, right, I'll just do it from the rack so that I've done it, so I've got the demo. So that's why um, that's why I didn't do the Zetch from the floor and I did it from the rack. No other good reason. Um, if you were doing it in training, you could either do it from the floor or from the rack, depending on what's practical for you to set up. Like I say, I don't really do them in my training, especially not when peaking for powerlifting. Um, they're good for strong one though. Right, last step. Turn the music back up again. Last one, best one. Remember the floor is crooked.
<clears throat> right, come on. Concentrate. That wasn't too bad. Oh. Right then. I still think I could have done three more, to be honest with you. And yeah, that was a PB pause squat. Bit. Uh. <laughs> it's a weird one, right? So, don't get me wrong, I'm happy with it. I came in here expecting a proper battle, like a real hard session. It's almost a little bit disappointing how easy it was. I thought I was really gonna have to push through it today. This is where the deadlifts are horrendous. So the deadlifts are paused on the eccentric. It's only 157.5. I wonder if there's just been a typo in my program or something. So, I will do the deadlifts and then I will go to the gym. Well, what I'll probably do is do the deadlifts go in the house. I might change my t-shirt because I, I think I smell a little bit now to be honest with you. Um, then go to the gym, finish off the rest of the session, come home, eat, get on my work for the day. Pretty pleased. Like I said, I'm, so I'm pleased at the strength I'm just a bit disappointed. I didn't have to try harder. Like I wanted a good hard graft type session, but that's a good thing of having like accessory work and stuff RP based is that with things moving well, I can push that a bit harder instead. So I just need to get stuff moved over so I can deadlift because the deadlift area is just in front of you. Um, right, get the velocity off. Um, right, what is the best way of doing this? So tomorrow I will be, not tomorrow, Friday I'll be benching. So if I stick the bench in here. And deadlift down there. Do you want to see this? It's probably pretty boring. No, I'll I'll pause you and then I'll come back once I've sorted this out. Okay, so on to some pause deadlifts. Yes, this is a dirty carpet. This is just for coming in from outside. Wipe the feet on. It's not clean. I'm not gonna use it to do any actual stuff on. That's why I've got it, to keep the area underneath it nicer. What am I doing? Pause deadlifts, so. Up as normal, nearly to the ground, pause, down. Start again. Sixty done. Plan is three by three. 157.5. So because I'm lazy, I'm probably just gonna do 160. And see how that goes. 
Um, I don't know how grip's going to be on these, so we'll just give it a go and see. Did I bring the deadlift wedge home? I did, it's down there. So because the garage is on a slight slope, I've got these bits of rubber behind just to stop the bar from rolling um, as I deadlift. Um, yeah, anyway. So I'll go hook grip for these. So that's obviously how I pull. Should be fine for doing the reps with it. We'll find out shortly. That was all right. That's 100. And then 140 next. And then after 140, go 160 for the first set. If it's like massively off target, like ridiculously easy, then I might go up a small amount, but I don't want to just go completely rogue and then have the rest of the session just be rubbish. Um, collars. So we'll see how that goes. Something that I have noticed is my grip is not the best. But you probably already know, actually, one of the not one of, on my upper session on a Friday, I do some additional grip work. Um, and on my main deadlift session, I'm doing reps double overhand, up as heavy as I can. My double overhand deadlift's only 140. It's pretty poor, really. Right then. I was just about to say fair set, but there still isn't a set, is it? fine just gonna watch it back make sure the pause is in a decent position and then we'll load up 160 yes I've got my straps out because I just looked at my program and it says if grip limiter use straps so I've got them there just in case um, so I don't want that to be a reason to not do the reps but I can at least do the first rep without you know so, three reps, three count pause. So one without, thumbs feel like they're gonna tear open. At least I've done the first rep without. Three. That's way harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, a bit lightheaded there. It's a real weird one on that because the um, the rep on the way up is actually fairly easy holding it in that position horrible i reckon i could have done two more like that so set the rest timer <gasps> excuse me got it set for three minutes and then move on to the next one let's have a look and see if there's any more questions <sighs> goals for comp I've definitely already talked about that. So, in this video, even. So I'm not going to cover that again. A question I might get 
is about why I'm pausing the deadlift on the way down rather than the way up. So there's a few different reasons. Each pause deadlift variation has a different use. So pausing on the way up is good to help you be in a good position when you're pulling. And it also highlights if you're too far forward or too far behind the bar, it'll force you into the right position. It's very hard to actually go heavy on that because you're starting to generate force and then stopping and then starting again. So it's not necessarily the trait we'd want to train all the time. It's more of a positional exercise. On the opposite way, so pausing on the way down, it means you can go heavier because you've already done the lift. You're then holding a position on the way down, which, I, which is an isometric, which is static, which is stronger than the concentric, which is the actual lifting part. So it means you can handle more weight, it's potentially safer. Um, obviously, if you're using a lot more weight, that would reduce the, uh, how safe it is, is to trade off. Um, but it also means it doesn't reinforce a bad position. So when you're doing normal pause deadlifts, you might find it's easier when you do pause deadlifts, say for example, to be further forwards, to then reinitiate the pull. That can create a bad habit for your normal pull, so you don't want that. So it depends on why you're doing them. And that's why you'd want to specify when writing a program for someone, whether the pauses are on the way up, on the way down, what position they are, are they below the knee, above the knee, just off the ground, whatever they are is going to be relevant to the person, um, to what their weakness is. So that's why I'm doing the pauses there. Um, it's not like with bench and squats that are really simple, like you generally just pause at the bottom, because um, obviously there's no, um, there's no turnaround with the deadlift. It's only the concentric for a normal deadlift. So that's the closest we've got to being in the, in the hole of the deadlift, if you like, where there's still tension. is on the way down after there's already been force. You could then re-deadlift from there, but then you're missing out on that bottom part of the range of motion, which obviously you need in a normal deadlift. So that's not ideal. Right. What I'm going to do this time, so I wasn't 100% sure if I would bother with the straps, but very clearly after the first rep, I was like, yeah, I am. Um, I'll put the straps on and have them ready to go for the second and third rep, so I'm not waiting around for ages. But what I'll try and do on this is maybe exaggerate the pause a bit longer. It feels like about 10 seconds in my head. In reality, it's probably about two. Oh, they are nasty. <sighs> That's two sets done. So something you could help me with. I want to redecorate in here so that I can do more videos for my athletes and whatnot. That will just look better. At the minute, obviously it's just the inside of the garage. Now, the constraint I've got is I'm renting, so I can't just knock things down and just do whatever I want. But I do want to make it better. So like that door, for example, proper grimy. Um, but I can't just replace that. Even clean, yeah, to be fair, probably could give it a good clean. Um, but the rest of it, I want to do something with it so I can do the videos and stuff, have them look a bit nicer in the background. Um, so any suggestions are welcome. So there's a breeze block, it's a breeze block wall on that side, that side, door there, obviously normal bricks here. Although uh, there's someone coming this weekend for the wet patch up there. If you follow my videos enough, you'll know there was a wet patch coming through in the roof there. So don't actually know 
how they're going to sort that out, to be honest with you. Um, so then maybe after that, we'll see. I consider just painting, but I mean, I'd have to get landlord's permission, which is one thing. But then, do I want to go to the effort of painting if there's a simpler solution? I don't know is the answer. And ideally, I don't want to have to take everything out of here to do it. Like this stuff, because I'd have to take it apart to get it out through there. And that was a hassle to move it. Um, I suppose it's mainly that area behind you, which I need to sort out. I'll show you, and then I'll do my next set. So, at the minute, obviously that's the garage door. There's this wall here, and then there's this stuff. So at the minute, it's basically just storage. Um, these shelves are not actually fixed. So I'm wondering about taking them down. Um, so that, when I'm over here and I do a video, is a better background instead of it being all that stuff. Now, granted, I know that tidying up is one option. I probably will do that, but I'm just thinking of if anyone has any other suggestions and that'll be pretty handy because I don't know anything about any of this stuff. When it comes to getting strong, human body, I know stuff. When it comes to stuff like this, I do not know stuff. Oh, my thumb's splitting. Right, last step. Put on a bit of chalk for this, I think. And then, when I finish training, it'll be off to the gym to train. Well, yeah, what I think I'm... Oh, that was a bad move. Put chalk on, got chalk in my mouth, or hair, <laughs> went to get it out of my mouth with a hand that's covered in chalk. I can tell you something now, that is that chalk is not delicious. Right, last set. In case you're wondering why I'm not wearing my belt, it's mainly because I don't want to. I find with uh, deadlifts, higher rep stuff, wearing a belt, you get really dizzy. I have passed out deadlifting before. Don't really want to do that, to be honest with you. So if it means I take a bit of a hit on my weight, it's not the end of the world. Probably better to lift less and be conscious than not. Right. definitely a hair in my mouth question is is it attached to my beard or has it come off my hair my head I feel that my erect is in a good way. And that is it. So, what I'm going to do now is head to the other gym. Well, get a drink tie these few bits, head to the other gym. I've got left Hatfield squats, uh, single leg Romanian deadlifts, single leg sit up, single leg hyperextension, hip machines, sled, calves and tibs. Sounds like a lot. You've got three quarters of an hour. The only thing Heavy will be the Hatfields. Um, if the gym's quiet enough, I'll film them. If it's not, I won't. Uh, so I guess you'll see if the video is ending here, 
then that's the end and i'll see you in a couple of days if the video does not end here then obviously i did film the stuff um with that said take care i will see you later